We have to understand how metformin works to understand how other things might work better than metformin. No one is saying that you should stop taking metformin. I wanna make sure that's very clear. You should probably talk to your doctor. I'm just some dude on the internet. But the reality is, is when you look at mechanisms and you look at end result, there are multiple ways to go about it. So the end result, we wanna control or lower our glucose. The end result, we wanna improve insulin resistance. Metformin works by increasing what's called AMPK. That simply means that it's basically flipping this little switch that makes your body think it's in more of a deficit. That's a very colloquial way of putting it, but essentially by doing that, it triggers the body to say, hey, we should soak up fuel that is currently available. So therefore it can modulate glucose and it can have subsequent effects down the line. You've probably heard of this supplement that I'm gonna talk about first, but I'm not gonna talk about one supplement. I actually wanna talk about two because the first one we have a lot of research on and it's been talked about a lot on the internet, but the second one is one that is up and coming that we're seeing lots of new research come out on that is absolutely flooring me so much to the point where I'm gonna mess with it and experiment myself. So let's go ahead and break this down. Now after today's video, I popped a link down below for LMNT, Element Electrolytes. Whether you are someone that is fasting, doing low carb, whether you're vegan, whether you're just trying to control your blood sugar, electrolytes are important. And the thing that I like about Element is they taste unbelievable, but we're talking about something that doesn't have any sugar in it. So we're talking sodium, potassium, magnesium. Amazing flavors. I like the citrus salt flavor, I like the mango chili, and when I want something different, I like their chocolate salt that I can actually put in warm water and drink like a hot chocolate. So the link down below gets you a free variety pack. So you get a free sample pack of all the different flavors with any purchase. So that link down below is drinklmnt.com slash Thomas. It's directly below this video in the top line of the description. Check them out. Now the first supplement that I'm gonna talk about is berberine. Berberine is really effective in people that have poorly managed insulin resistance or poorly managed glucose. So it's extra effective in people that maybe aren't doing the best diet or maybe have been dealing with diabetes for a long time. And generally the recommended dosage is like 300 to 500 milligrams two to three times per day. So it's something you take quite consistently. And I'll explain how berberine works because I do think this is something that should be added in to your arsenal, but it's not the end all be all. There was a study published in Metabolism that looked at two trials. One was in people that were newly diagnosed with type two diabetes. And the other trial was in people that had poorly managed or more so out of control diabetes, right? So they put them on either uh, berberine or metformin in both groups. Okay, so it was berberine versus metformin. They found in the newly diagnosed group that berberine worked almost just as well, if not just as well in other categories as metformin, improving glucose, improving glucose tolerance, improving HbA1c, fasting insulin, tremendous results. What was really fascinating though was the other trial that looked at poorly managed diabetes. They found that berberine worked even better in fact, it exceeded metformin in some categories. Huge improvements in HbA1c, fasting glucose, etc. 28% reduction in fasting insulin and a 44% reduction in their HOMA IR. That's their longer term insulin, kind of a snapshot. The interesting thing about berberine though, is that berberine is working on glucose transport mechanisms and digestion. So what that means is it's affecting the rate of carbohydrate absorption it's not working at a cellular level. So when someone says, hey, berberine is better than metformin, at the end result, perhaps, because yes, you are having an effect on HbA1c, and that is very important to look at, but it's not safe to say it works better than metformin in its respective category, because berberine is not necessarily turning the dimmer switch of AMPK, right? Whereas metformin is. So two different mechanisms. Now this is a very good thing because this means they can work in tandem together. So people will see a video like this and they think I'm gonna drop taking metformin, I'm gonna go on berberine. And although that could absolutely work in time, the neat thing is, is if you are in a state where you need both, you could effectively use both, right? But I am not a doctor, so do not take my word for that, right? I just have to share the information. But this newer one that we're starting to see is an Indian herb called gymnema. Now the research is pretty new, but the research that is out there is longer term. Now this literally means sugar blocker, sugar destroyer in Hindu. 
So obviously called that for a reason. Now, what's interesting about gymnema is it seems to be a longer term thing, whereas berberine seems to be something that you take short term to help with carbohydrate absorption. There was a study published in Ethnopharmacology, took a look at 22 different people, and results were pretty interesting with just 400 milligrams of this stuff. So 18 to 20 months, they gave subjects 400 milligrams per day, not with meals, not broken up evenly throughout the day, just a simple 400 milligram dose daily for 18 to 20 months. Huge improvements in fasting insulin, fasting glucose, and HbA1c. What does this tell us? What this tells us is that this is something that isn't necessarily working with meals, although it might, but it might be actually doing something bigger picture. So much so that five of the participants in this study were able to go off of their blood sugar drugs. This is very interesting. What's the proposed mechanism? I mean, we still need more data, but what we're seeing now is that it's affecting, one, the potency of our insulin secretion. So when our body receives a signal from glucose, we are potently producing insulin the way that we should. Big spikes or moderate spikes and subsequent falls, right? Not too much, not too little, just the right amount. That's what we want. But it also inhibits the process of insulin inactivation in the liver. And I've used this analogy before, the liver, is like sort of the, it's sort of like the tower at an airport. It has a bunch of windows all around it, and it's looking around, scanning the sky, looking for airplanes and flying objects. The liver does that with glucose. It's looking around and it notices, receives a signal from glucose and says, up, oh, blood sugar, we need to call the pancreas and say, produce insulin. So it starts with the blood sugar communicating with the liver sort of way, right? Now let's pretend that that watchtower at the airport is, the windows are just, like super dirty, so they can't really see what's going on. So if we can improve the ability for the liver to receive that signal from glucose, then the liver can call the pancreas appropriately. So if the watchtower can see the airplanes flying around, it can call the gate at the airport and say, hey, don't let this plane leave yet, there's too much crazy stuff in the sky. So it has the ability to effectively facilitate how we utilize glucose. So very promising stuff. So berberine, in the short term to uh, manage glucose as far as meals are concerned and postprandially. But this gymnema stuff might be something that you check out. It's inexpensive and the research is cutting edge. But again, I'm a dude on the internet. I'll see you tomorrow.